Woke up this morning and my face had a pimple. Pop that sucker went off like a missile. Faux shizzle, feeling just a little. Optimistic, so I start to whistle. Walk outside and I see a little nympho. Said her name was Sheba, so I start to giggle. Why you laughing? Sorry that it slip, yo. Used to be on top, now you look a little pitiful. Don't cry, just wait, girl, it's simple. Wait till the next bull market is in full. Swing watch, you'll be the talk of all crypto. But for now, they low, cause you look like a shit show. <laughs> I hadn't been a rap for you guys in a while, so I thought I'd write one real quick before I started today's episode, so hopefully you enjoyed that silly little intro. As always, welcome back to another episode of TA with MK. My name is Ma K. And in today's episode, we're going to quickly talk about the Bitcoin price action of recent, as we've had a little bit of a pump over the past couple of days. We're going to discuss how far we think it can go and why it got held up where it has got held up so far. And as always, if you guys are liking the content, please remember to like and subscribe. And let's go. It's T.A. with M.K. It's T.A. with M.K. All right. Now, before we talk about anything related to Bitcoin, I think it would be um, foolish of me not to acknowledge that traditional stocks, which it is Friday here in the United States and the SPX, or in this case, the E-mini futures closes in about 45 minutes in my, you know, where I'm at anyways, it closes at 4 p.m. Eastern time. I'm in mountain time. So it's 1.15 here right now, it closes at two o'clock my time. But it would be foolish of me or irresponsible of me not to acknowledge that everything that Bitcoin's going to do, this is the driver, obviously. We know that as as altcoins are concerned, Bitcoin's the driver of them, but we know that Bitcoin's, it's, 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 its master is the traditional stock markets, right? Because at the end of the day, they're, they're more highly correlated now than ever with institutions and things, and I mention this all the time in my videos, but I just want to mention that first before we even go to some Bitcoin analysis and you know just quickly cover what is going on as we're approaching the weekend with the E-mini futures and the regular S&P 500, right? So here on the E-mini futures, one thing that um, the, guy, the guy that runs the trading group that I paid for, I mentioned him in a previous video. I, I can leave that link in the description again where I went over three awesome crypto YouTubers. And he's, in a, he's a paid Telegram group. It's, it's Crypto Revolution or CBC, Crypto Bitcoin Chris. And one thing that he had mentioned, I've been tracking this chart, but I hadn't really been paying super, super close attention to the volume. So I wanted to give a, you know, I guess credit to him for pointing this out so that I can share it with you. But one of the things we've been watching is this has slowly been pushing higher, right? Because you had this rejection back here, which was major resistance, major resistance. You know, we were tracking this. We're in this falling wedge. This is just the hour time frame. So this is just price action that's been going on since the end of June. Well, it finally had the breakout and the retest, and we've been slowly just trending higher, right? You know, putting in highs, lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. And like right now we're approaching this major zone of resistance, but the concern is that the volume is starting to drop off. Your biggest spike of volume recently was right here where it was at support, right? And it was able to bounce. This was a major area of support where it hit at a, oops, wrong one, where it bounced here once, here twice. And then of course, right here, volume came in to support that. But if you take a trend line here across, you can clearly see the volume has slowly been decreasing, which is similar to bullish and bearish divergence that you can use on all sorts of other indicators. But at the end of the day, the volume just is just money, right? It's the amount of money flowing in, it's the amount of transactions, buys, sell orders for that asset, or in this case, the you know, S&P 500 futures. And what this means is that less and less people are throwing money at this as it, as it approaches this major area of resistance, which once again, we know that's resistance because it got rejected back here twice, which led to this you know fairly large pullback. So that's one thing to keep an eye on that it is a concern. Um, kind of curious how things close today here in about 45 minutes. If it can still stay above this level of support that it's at right now, which is marked by these green arrows, you know, support, support, support. If it could keep above that, I mean, that's at least in the short term bullish. Maybe it means we have an okay weekend uh, of price action for Bitcoin and potentially some, you know, some good altcoin trading. But overall, if it can't break above this, whether it's today or the beginning of next week and flip this as support, and especially if it puts in you know, a lower high or if it gets rejected here, that would be a double top or even a triple top, I guess, in this case, when you're this zoomed in. Then at that point, you'd, ha you'd have to expect it to go visit at least the mid range again, which we spoke about in a previous video. That'd be here in this kind of yellow area. Or, you know, if that doesn't hold, then we may go all the way back down to the range low. So this is something we have to acknowledge and keep an eye on. Um, we'll also hop over to the SPX and kind of see that it's doing something similar. Um, it uh, we'll zoom out on that one real quick, actually. So this is the uh, four-hour SPX uh, chart, the S&P 500. And overall, it doesn't have me as concerned, I guess. Uh, bigger picture, of course, we're on the four-hour, which we were on the one-hour over on the you know, E-mini futures. 
Bigger picture, I'm not super concerned as far as potentially pushing higher, you know, over the course of the next week or so with Bitcoin. But there, you know, is reason to believe that it may consolidate or potentially pull back and retest some of its support in the in the short term, which we'll go over here in just a few minutes. Overall, we've been tracking this for quite some time that it was in this large falling wedge, obviously, right? And that it broke to the downside here briefly, lost this fairly major area of support. I wouldn't call it major, but you know, clearly it had two good bounces back here. It lost that area. And so, you know, you're looking at that potentially to be a bear or a, you know, retest it bearishly and push down further. We talked about that at one point that maybe it'd come down here and visit this little bit more major area of support down here where it had more interactions. But ultimately it was able to regain that support, which make this became a uh, what's known as a bear trap. A lot of people will try to short whenever a major area is lost and whenever it's able to regain that area, and especially when it got back inside the pattern, back above this trend line, right? That was bullish. At that point, we're just taking it level by level. And if we clear everything back up that I just messed my chart all up with, we can see that we are still above this most recent area of previous resistance. Now it's been flipped to support. Obviously it was um, support, my head's in the way, but if I zoom it out a little bit, it was support back here, right? This area right here was support, bounced there. Let's zoom that back out now. You know, it's support here, you know, wick down below it a little bit here, but that was kind of that bottom trend line, bounced there. So this little box that I previously had as red, which was meant to be resistance, uh, I, I usually I'll switch that to green now to, to, to show that it signifies support. But in the short term, it is acting as support. So, you know, if we, if we, if nothing happens really significant over the next 30 minutes or so when the SPX closes, um, like I said, it's not really bullish or bearish in my eyes as far as what, what I would expect is a lot of more, more or less sideways action over the weekend. Um, of course, Bitcoin, we don't, we know that crypto, since it's so highly manipulated and the weekend, there's not institutions trading. Yeah. We'll probably see some scammy wicks to the downside or, you know, potentially we get one last push to the upside, which we'll talk about shortly. But as far as the overall outlook of, you know, the next week or so, two weeks, you know, the rest of this month, as long as we can remain inside this pattern, and especially as long as we can remain above this level in my eyes around 3850, which we're not very far above, but we are above. Then I think at some point, you know, it would be it would make sense to push a little bit higher, right? We do have some bigger areas of resistance to contend with. Obviously, back here you can see this area was strong support at one point when it flipped it back here in uh, May of last year. So clearly, at some point, that's why I have it marked with this dark green. I would, I would I've been expecting us to slowly, you know, trend our way up to that, and so that's what we'll be keeping an eye out for. Now we're over here on the Bitcoin weekly chart, and I just want to quickly acknowledge one major reason, which I'm sure most people that have been following this are aware of but just in case you're not i wanted to point it out now this was a chart that i would used in a previous video from a few days ago where i was just talking about how if you had logarithmic logarithmic if you watch that video on and i think it's arithmetic or something i believe is the other one linear i was calling it arithmetic and i had a, a fellow youtuber slash friend um alpha commission point out that i was that i was saying it wrong which which is funny that that's actually very typical of me i, I my whole life i like to to say words the wrong way or <laughs> I, I used to have a friend that would make fun of me because um you have color and then you know and then you have whatever on your shirt and i just always say color for both i don't actually honestly know which one's the right one for whatever i say but to me they're both just color you know i know one's pronounced differently but hey that's 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 mckay for you um I'm almost, I always say I'm almost, I'm almost smart. I almost always sound, or I'm always so close to sounding smart, but uh, inevitably I wind up sounding stupid most of the time. But anyway, got a little off topic there. But so the biggest thing here on this chart, where I wasn't going to talk about the logarithmic or anything like that, that doesn't really matter. This was just a good weekly chart to pull up to kind of show you that we had the 200 week moving average, the uh, simple, sorry, moving average, which is this yellow one. And this was a key thing that in most previous bull runs or even bear markets, it acted as the bottom or you know, typically held up as support. And obviously it was very concerning to most people when we lost that and we are below it still. Um, obviously we bounced on this green zone, which was the previous bull market top back here, right? In 2017 uh, slash early 2018. But right now that's, if you take back what I just uh, drew there in the way, you can see that it bounced or it hit that exactly, almost perfectly. That is basically where all the sell orders in the short to midterm have been waiting um, in case you know there was this pump back up to retest it. So you have to look at this at one of two ways. Is this ultimately just going to be a bearish retest on the weekly before we roll over and see further downside? I would expect if that's the case, that the next time we you know head down to these lows, I would personally expect lower low 
at some point, something down maybe in the 16 to 17K range. But ultimately, when it comes to a weekly, we want to wait and see how it closes. Now, can it close above that? Because that paints a different picture, right? Um, and, and that doesn't mean to say that over the next couple of days, which we're going to talk about, or, the, or you know, until Sunday's candle closes, which is the weekly candle, that it can't go higher. It's going to matter where the body closes. We need the body of this candle, which if we zoom in a little bit right now, clearly the body is down here at around you know 21,766. That 200 moving average was around 22,500 ish dollars. So that's going to be key over the next you know 48 hours. Can we close a body above that? And if we can't, do we spend another week just kind of consolidating below it, um, you know, letting the indicators cool off, and then do we take another attempt at it, or are we met with you know a, a fierce rejection, and then you know, of course, the downside um, idea that I was mentioning plays out. Now we're over on the daily chart for Bitcoin. This is a Binance chart. And I wanted to show you this chart real quick just to kind of show you that basically we've had the same thing happening right now that previously happened. We had a back here between November when we had our top, uh, which was around, you know, 67K. Uh, sorry, not 67K, um, just under 69 or just under 70K anyways, around 68,900 and blah, blah, whatever it is, right? We had this falling wedge that eventually finally broke out on the daily to the upside around early february we got a little pump you know we did put in a higher low here so things were starting to look good we kind of started to create this little rising wedge which obviously is a bearish pattern but at least it was showing some signs of potential signs of a reversal but ultimately it rolled over again um, you know, that actually statistic played out the way the statistics said it should, 68% chance it broke down and it did. And now we're just inside of yet another, you know, it's repeating itself essentially. And that's another uh, link I'll leave in the description is uh, a previous video I made about price action, you know, mirroring or repeating itself. It's something that a guy named Trip in my uh, crypto revolution group, was he was the one that introduced me to that idea of patterns just tending to repeat themselves or flip themselves or mirror themselves. It's a cool concept. But in this case, it's kind of just doing the same thing. So question is, does it follow this part again where we do finally eventually break out, you know, in the short term, which would be kind of what we've been talking about as a little significant relief rally, maybe even bigger than the one we've experienced so far. You know, does it break out and put in a little similar pump? Now back here from the bottom to the top of the pump was about 37%. If we did something similar, if we want to call this here the bottom inside the wedge, 37% would put us up around say 24 to 24 and a half K, which, you know, that's in line with some of the other things I've mentioned recently where I, I, I've mentioned 24 to 25 K as being kind of what I would look at as potentially an area that this, this bounce could take us to. Obviously the, the top to me would be the, the best it could do or best case if things got bullish for a few weeks would be 29K, but I, I haven't really believed truly that that's going to happen. But something like 24 to 25K has always been realistic to me. So we'll be keeping an eye on it if this, if and when this breaks out because that will be our next clue as to maybe the last, I guess, half of this little rally. And then we're gonna zoom in one more uh, time frame and even further to kind of show you some more shorter term analysis. Now we're on the Bitcoin four hour chart. I don't even have support or resistance lines drawn on this chart. I just want to keep it kind of as clean as possible just so you can look at the price action and these moving averages and kind of understand why it is that we got held up where we did besides the 200 you know, simple on the weekly, obviously, being the, ma the major reason that we've spoke about earlier, is they also, just on the shorter time frames, you have this major area of resistance that, you know, once it broke down and bearish retested this zone at around 20, you know, 2,800 to $23,000. You know, once that flipped, of course, it came back down, it tried one more time. This was a shorter time frame double top and it broke down, you know, and then we ended up going down to our lows at, you know, 17, just below $18,000. Well, now you have a couple different ways you can look at this. You could say, hey, we've kind of created a little Adam and Eve pattern, which an Adam and Eve pattern is basically just a V and then a circle after it, the circle, can, um, a rounded bottom, sorry. That can go down as low as the V or it can go, you know, higher is a little bit more bullish, which in this case, it was a little higher. Could we be forming something like this? Yes, we could be, but right now we're flirting with losing that. Plus we're in a little bit of a rising channel that did break to the upside, but you know, if it loses that level, there's another way you can look at this, which is concerning. Now, this, this is, I mentioned this because if our daily candle today at six o'clock, um, especially the weekly candle, even more important to me, which comes in a couple of days, I feel we need to close for sure above that neckline. We need to be closing above around 21,800, 
preferably above 22k. Um, if we wick below that today, I mean that's that's fine. But the biggest, the reason why it's a concern is if you invert the chart, which you can do Alt I. You can also make the case that this is now this is not a perfect one at all, but you can make the case that you kind of have a cup and handle as well. You got this cup, you know, and then you got this handle, which right now it's trying to it actually broke to the downside of it uh, if you have it inverted, which obviously is a good thing in this case um, because we're inverted, right? And we would like that makes us think, hey, this can get invalidated if it you know trends this way, which would be trending up over the next you know few days or a week. But the other concern is, does this just turn into a giant bull trap, um, which inverted right now, they would be a, bull, uh, a, a bear trap, right? Would be good, but again, we're, we're inverted. So if we turn it this way, does this whole price action, if it gets, breaks back into this little pattern and then starts trending this way, well, then you then you wonder, can this support around 20,800 or around you know even 20,000? Does it go all down? If that, if that doesn't hold, then that, I think that my downside targets or new lows um, will come to fruition. Doesn't mean it'll happen instantly. Um, obviously, some of the stuff, news that's coming out here in the near future to do with the CPI data and inflation and things will, will influence that. And again, the overall stocks. But these are what we're keeping an eye on. Right now, I'm not super concerned that we still can't push up to 23, 24, maybe even like 25 or just under 25K. It's just that we just had a pretty good run over the past several hours to, to a you know day and a half or so and you know you need it needs time to cool off the question is while it cools off how far down does it retrace or if it just goes sideways for a bit that's okay too because it gives the indicators and stuff time to cool off all right i think that's going to wrap it up for today as always check the link in the description for my telegram group if you want to join and maybe get a little more up to the minute uh, analysis obviously if anything we spoke about in today's video uh, begins to come to fruition it's easier to be in the group and see what i'm talking about in real time versus you know waiting for a youtube video to come out that may not be relevant by the time you watch it so uh, go ahead and join with that link in the description and as always if you guys are liking the content please do me a favor and remember to like and subscribe and we'll catch you tomorrow it's t -A -A.